Terry Greaves Beadwork carries tradition into the future. The biggest driving force behind what I do is the, the desire or need to want to communicate or to reach out to other people um, and to, in some way, share the universalities of our stories. Very basic things are important to all human beings, our families, our homes, our communities, and all of that. And that, that's something that culturally drives all of us in culturally different ways, but it's something that I think that all of us can come together on. My work starts for me usually as, um, the way I describe it, it's like a rock in my shoe. There's some little something that's in there that's rolling around and I need to deal with it. When my children were born, I realized that I needed to tell them stories. That I needed to tell them who they were. That is my job as their mother. I was driven initially by history. So I did a whole bunch of work about Kiowa history, specific moments in time that I marked visually to recognize something that had happened. And then that way I could show them and tell them this with these pictures that I had beaded. They loved Spider-Man, they loved Batman, they loved all the hero stories. Well, Kiowas have a hero too. The Sun Boys, they're black tennis shoes. Those Sun Boy shoes specifically came out of that time period, and the Sun Boys themselves are our sacred beings, but they're also the archetypal hero story that goes across the planet. When the election of Barack Obama happened, I started thinking about the vote. How did we as Native people get the vote? What was the history of the vote for Native people? Because I knew we weren't considered citizens of the United States till 1924. My grandmother was a 24-year-old woman before she was considered a citizen of the United States of America. Well, how does that happen and what happened? And then how did we get the citizenship and what led up to that? Because I know there must have been policy and all of that turned into a piece, right? All of that, that's the, it's a question that rolls around, a question that needs to be answered, and that's what I try to do in my work. And hopefully communicate in some way something that someone didn't know. My grandmother, Susie Big Eagle, was a bead worker. Her mother and her grandmother were of the generation when the beads first arrived here. Kiowa women, are the abstract artists of our people, and Kiowa men are the pictorial artists of our people. The men tell the history through their pictures. The women abstract the world. They're known for these containers that hold our most important things. These, they're called parflesh or rawhide containers, and they're painted with abstracted designs all the way around them. These boxes that contain the food that fed their families, the ceremonial clothes that their children wore and their families wore, their sacred objects, their medicine, their Indian medicine, all of that stuff, that's what they put in these boxes. So of course they were decorated the way they were. And of course this idea of the world was embedded on the outside of it in mineral paint. So when the beads arrive from Europe, the women got a hold of this new medium and there was a moment in time at the turn of the century when the painting turned to beads and the objects stopped being painted and they started being beaded. That is the line that I come from. Those beads, even though they are European, they became native in her hands, the way that they're native in my hands and the way that they were native. And all those women that came before me, when they got a new medium, they turned it into something very Kiowa. They turned it into something very native. That is survival. We co-opt a medium or we subvert a word 
Um, all of these things are ways that we have survived with the culture intact and with the ability to continue to speak from our perspective. There's power in the stories. I made this book that opens up into a five-pointed star so that you can walk around the object, right? And you walk around it the way that you walk around into a sacred space. And you can read each story on each page that walks you through part of the Sun Boy story because it's an epic story. The Sun Boy's story has helped me as a Kiowa person to understand what is important and I didn't realize that I had heard a part of that story when I was a child, um, that my mother had been always telling me a part of that story until I was older and I got to see, hear more of the story and I realized that that little piece was a part of this much longer story. And that, that book, that was a way for me to understand the Sun Boys in my own way. He's like our Jesus. He was the son of the sun and the son of an earth woman. always hope that my work can bring people together rather than pull them apart. I deal with really ugly facts. Genocide is an ugly fact. Germ warfare is an ugly fact. Loss of land is an ugly fact. Oil pipelines are an ugly fact. These things can be so difficult. They are so awful to think about, right? But they are us and we can't ignore them, right? We cannot ignore them. And so by addressing them, with beauty, yeah, that I can counter the ugliness of the story with the beauty of the object. Like they say, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, right? And for me, it is my prayer that everything that I make in some way or another helps me become a better person or helps me think through something a little clearer to help my children understand something, to be able to communicate in some way what it is to be a 21st century Native person, what it is to have very important things that need to be done for our children to carry them on into the next generation. In the end, all of these objects that I make, that I hope to continue to make, are really prayers for the future.